if the crap hit the fan in a very large way, there's a very good chance that the manufacturing base that creates all the pharmaceuticals and supplements that we've come to rely on will cease to be produced. It wouldn't take long for pharmacies to be ransacked and plundered when people realized that there was no longer any rule of law to enforce the law and that they had a lot of sick people at home to treat. Of course, hospitals and military stockpiles of medicinal supplies, man-made of course, will rapidly be depleted trying to treat all the sick people. So the question remains, in a long-term situation, if you have all this medication at home, how long is it really going to last? Well, let's talk about it today. All of the information I share with you today is based on research which was commissioned by the United States Department of Defense and was conducted by the Food and Drug Administration. So why would the US military want to know what the true expiration date of medications were? Well, the answer is simple. They had a huge stockpile and they wanted to know if they needed to throw it out and cycle in new stuff, which would cost a lot of money, or if they could just continue to use what they had on hand and potentially end up saving hundreds of millions of dollars in the long term. It's important to note that medication was only required to have expiration dates after 1979 and most vitamins and supplements and things of that nature are still not required by law to have expiration dates, although many still do voluntarily. So what is meant by shelf life and expiration dates when it comes to medicine? Well, simply put, it's when a manufacturer can guarantee the 100% potency of that medicine until. So this doesn't mean that your medication is simply gonna stop working after the expiration date. It just means that after that point, it's likely going to degrade. How long is it going to take to degrade to the point when it is not useful to you? Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, if it's not a survival situation and society is functioning as usual, you should absolutely respect those expiration dates on your medication. The primary risk factor in taking expired medication is that it's not going to be potent enough to treat the ailment that you're trying to treat. There are very few medications that were you to take them past their expiration date that they would actually be harmful to you or toxic in some way, shape or form. All the information in this video is based on an extensive longitudinal study, which is still ongoing, I should add, which was conducted by the FBA and commissioned by the US government Department of Defense. You can go check that out in the link below. It's stability profiles of drug products extended beyond labeled expiration dates. Lots of good info in here, but I'm gonna to try to give you a synopsis in the video today. So there were 122 drugs that were studied and there were several batches of each drug. So 20 to 30 batches of each drug. On the basis of these many batches, they were able to get an average of how long the drug would last. So one of the big overarching findings of this study was that 88% of the drugs that were tested were found to be of perfectly usable potency up to one year after they were said to have expired with an average time of five years past the expiration date for them to be usable. So what that means is that there were some drugs on this list that could last up to 20 years past their expiration date, and there were others that could only retain their potency rate up to about a year. Now it's important to understand that when they talk about potency, they have a pretty high standard for this. So they want 90% potency. So when we say that some drugs are only good for up to five years, that means that the drug retains 90% of its potency up to five years. So at six years, seven years, it might retain 85, 80% of its potency, still not enough for them to want to approve it for consumption. So what that says is that the drugs are still not necessarily entirely useless, even after the extended dates proposed by this study. Now, because this cross section of drugs is a pretty healthy sample of the drugs that are available on the market today, it's safe to presume that the overwhelming majority of drugs not only can be used past the expiration date, but well past the expiration date, and even after the expiration dates proposed in this study, will they still retain some potency 
for use. But in the case of things such as antibiotics, you run the risk of developing some sort of resistance or the antibiotic not being effective. And then of course the ailment not being treatable because you introduce too little of the medicine, the bacteria gained a resistance and now it's not going to work. So now you have to go and try a different antibiotic. So it's very important that if you have antibiotics past a certain expiration date, that you are factoring that in to the dosage that you're administering. Now, once again, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. When the grid is up, you absolutely should be consulting with a certified physician when it comes to the intake of prescription drugs. So amoxicillin, which is among the most common of antibiotics, was found to be extended up to 23 months past the expiration date, that is retaining 90% of its potency under storage conditions which are essentially cool and dry. Now that was in a tablet form. In a capsule form, it was found to be good up to 64 months past its expiration date or a little over five years. Now the fish antibiotics that I've purchased typically come with a two to three year shelf life on them. So if you add five years to that, if you're getting the capsule form with the powder inside, then that's potentially seven years that they're gonna retain 90% of their potency. Now we can speculate at our own risk, of course, if the grid were to go down and 10 years were to go by, that amoxicillin tablets that we had, or capsules I should say, would still retain some of their potency, maybe 70%, maybe 80%. Maybe that would require a higher dose. So just because it's past the date specified here doesn't mean it's completely useless. It just means it's less potent. And according to this study, amoxicillin is non-toxic after its expiration date. Now, cefalexin is another antibiotic which treats a variety of conditions that's also available in a fish antibiotic form, which has a much longer life expectancy. Now, the average true shelf life of cefalexin capsules was up to 57 months beyond the expiration date. But it should be noted that there was a much wider range of shelf life expectancy for this particular drug. In some cases, it was still good up to 135 months after its manufacturer stated expiration date. But on the lower end of that range, it was 28, still a lot higher than amoxicillin. So in my opinion, it's safe to assume that for a long-term antibiotic, cefalexin is preferred over amoxicillin. Now, ciprofloxacin is also another antibiotic which has a much longer shelf life than is purported by the manufacturer, up to 142 months past its expiration date if properly stored. Now, that's the upper end of the range. The lower end of that range is 12 months, depending on the batch that they tested, with an average of about 55 months. So we don't really know what the details were of the batches that they tested. Were they being stored in different ways? or did they get these samples from different places? But we can probably speculate that if you are a consumer buying this off the shelf, fresh off the lot, that if you store it properly in a cool, dry place, i.e. not your washroom, where there's going to be a lot of humidity and temperature changes, then it's probably going to last you closer to the end of that range, I would speculate. Again, we do so at our own risk. Another antibiotic called doxycycline was found to, again, have a average shelf life of around 50 months past the manufacturer's purported expiration date. Now, potassium iodide, which is a popular one amongst preppers, because it's used to prevent the thyroid from ingesting high amounts of radiation that would be present after a nuclear blast or in a nuclear fallout situation, is found to have an extended shelf life of almost 184 months at the upper end of the range. So we're talking like 15 years past its uh, purported manufacturer's shelf life. But to err on the side of caution with that, it's around 69 months or approximately six years that you could use your potassium iodine. I'm not sure if that also pertains to iodate, but potassium iodine for the purpose of managing nuclear radiation after its uh, expected shelf life. Morphine was found to have a shelf life 90 months after its expected expiration date. Good luck getting a hold of that unless you know somebody. Again, do so at your own risk as I'm pretty sure it's probably illegal where you are. Now acetaminophen or acetaminophen pseudoephedrine was a variant that they tested, was found to have a shelf life beyond what was expected by the manufacturer of up to two years. So add on two years to the shelf life of your Tylenol 
and that's when it will have 90% of its potency until. Now, I recently purchased some Tylenol and it had an expiration date which was three years out. So I don't know if I bought it right when it came into the store or if it was a year after. So I don't know what the typical uh, shelf life is for Tylenol that you would purchase. But when you tack on the extra shelf life allowed by this study, it's probably going to be around five to seven years that it's going to rate, retain 90% of its potency. And again, that's 90%. So that doesn't mean after 10 years it's going to be totally impotent. Can I still use that word for that purpose? It's kind of been soiled. It doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means that you might have to take two where you would probably take one. Now, naproxen is another popular analgesic medication, which has a shelf life of up to 52 months past its expiration date. Penicillin, you get an extra 70 months. Tetracycline, you get an extra 50 months on average, but there's a high range here as well. Up to 133 months was found in one of the batches to still be good. So after 10 years, that tetracycline may or may not be good. But with tetracycline, it was found, and this should be noted, that this one could potentially be toxic or had adverse effects if you use it past its shelf life date. So you get an average of 50, but it's kind of dangerous because it has a very wide range of 17 to 133 months. So for this reason, it's probably not the ideal antibiotic for long-term emergency preparedness purposes. Codeine, which is another over-the-counter medication in some places, was found to have an 89-month extended shelf life. Now, diazepam is a drug which is only available with a prescription in most places, I would presume. But it's good for treating alcohol withdrawal and for anxiety purposes, and it can also help to treat seizures. Now in the study the diazepam was in a liquid form and it was found to have a shelf life about 53 months past the expiration date which is pretty good also. Now I was really hoping this one would be a bit longer because this one definitely has the potential to save lives especially when you're talking grid down and you're going to be out there in the field more often. There's a lot of people today who rely on those uh, anti-anaphylactic medications in order to keep them from from dying essentially so you're going to have to be very careful if there's things that you are allergic to uh, to try not to be exposed to those things i know in some cases it's out of your control but bear that in mind because the epipens are not going to last much longer than two years according to this study and again that's at 90 percent potency but that is something that you're probably going to want to be as potent as possible then again, if it's all you have and a person is anaphylactic, do so at your own risk. Now on the topic of allergies, diphenhydramine was found to have an average shelf life of up to 70 months past its expiration date. So diphenhydramine is an antihistamine, which is also used as a sleep medication. So, or a medication just to calm somebody down. Obviously you never wanna do that if your security is in jeopardy or if all your five senses are commanded by the situation to be fully 100% operational, but it does have alternate uses. And that could probably be a very important drug because there's a lot of people who use uh, Benadryl, as far as I know, once again, I'm not a doctor, but to keep some conditions from escalating, uh, like cancer, for instance. So there's well over 100 other medications that were looked at in this research paper that I would strongly encourage you to check out and be sure to do more research of your own. And please, if you enjoy this video, show your support, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.